Hello everybody, welcome back to the YouTube video showcasing all Army Cyber Stakes or ACI CTF that was going on this past week. Uh, I've been wanting to showcase some of these cool challenges. There were a ton of fantastic ones. Uh, I'm trying to get a lot of the tougher ones, at least some of the more complex ones that I had solved out of the way now before I burn out trying to record all this stuff. But this challenge is called I've Caught You Now. It's worth 250 points. Uh, currently it's Friday. The competition ends on Sunday, so there might be a few more solves. But at the time of recording, there are only 43 solves for this challenge. So it says XSS or cross-site scripting is a thing of the past. Read all about it here and we're given a link. So I will open that up in a web browser. And it took a little bit to <laughs> render that page, which was weird. But this is the Cyber Times web page. It says there are five cool ways to protect your websites from hackers. This looks kind of like a blog here. Featured posts, you will never believe this flag we found. It says when going head first in CTF, everyone wants to find blah, blah, blah flags and help us out. Submit cool content to us. Okay. So if I were to click on one of these, I'll go to article zero here. It says, uh, to fight back these companies deploy application called a web application and then ellipsis it says you're out of free articles please use an account with a cyber time subscription to read this article so if i try to click on any of these links here search for security or hacking or exploit cybercrime firewall ctfs it looks like they're all modifying this search url here the search is the location that it's trying to go to with a argument or an HTTP variable, a get that's passed in, search, and what we're actually looking for. So going back to the page though, this featured post here, article one as the link, it says you'll never believe this flag we found. We figured out one challenge, you won't believe the flag we got, find out below. Okay, so that must be maybe where a flag could be hidden, but we do not have access to read that page. Um, there is a submit cool content to us location. Send us links to cool content. We'll see if it is newsworthy. And I, could, I suppose we could give them a URL. So based off of everything that we've learned, uh, looks like there are web pages, there are blogs on this site. Uh, there's a location that we could submit a URL to visit and we aren't able to access some of the page some of the pages and some of the content on this website. Given the challenge description, I'm assuming this is going to be a cross-site scripting attack where we need to be able to drive whoever validates or whoever checks in that submission page to review and access some of these pages that we cannot access. So where could we control or where do we have an input that we could modify and make it do something? It sounds like we could at least kind of offer some input into the search blog functionality and the page is moving slowly for me so why is that uh, i'll pause and see if it comes back okay now it seems to be stable but if i were to search for a thing like the letter a or please subscribe it looks like it renders it out on the page so maybe we could do some things to actually get um some cross-site scripting in there render some html okay that h1 doesn't seem to load for me. So that kind of takes away some of the wind that we had, but what else could we do? H1, anything, that's so weird that it does that. We could search for like an image tag maybe. If we do a little image source equals nothing. Oh, okay. It says this page has been blocked by SecureWAF and this is still on the web page. This isn't, this isn't our browser trying to tell us something. It says SecureWAF detected that the UL parameter search contains dangerous data. So this web request has been blocked for your protection. Ah, okay. So that must've triggered with the image source thing. Is it just the image tag that makes it whine? Yeah. Yeah. So slash image slash I am. Is that going to load for me? Okay, so IM works. It's just searching for IMG with an opening arrow and it'll whine for me. Secure WAF detect URL parameter search contains dangerous data. It's weird though, because it, it, it includes the URL parameter itself in its response. So if I did something strange with a URL parameter, does it have to be search that has the weirdness or could it be, could I, could I also include something in here like an image source equals maybe could i could i do that or just i'll just use the image tag itself that seems to break it okay 
Could I use that H1 tag that I just tried earlier? H1, hello, encode is part of the URL. Ooh, ooh, okay. Oh, I, I ended code saying that aloud, my bad. H1 as the encode. That seems to do its own injection, which is kind of peculiar. Well, let's start to script this. Let's start to hammer this in a way that we could work with it and kind of be able to monitor and see everything that's happening. Uh, what is the name of this challenge again? I've caught you now. So make directory, I have caught you now. Let's hop over in there and let's start to script this with Python. Uh, I have all of the other tabs open from some previous videos I've been recording. I'm trying to get a lot of these out for you guys. So let's import requests. Let's get this URL. Uh, let's say URL equals just the base URL. I don't need search in here. So let's get a requests dot get URL. I'll say R to equal that. I'll print out our R dot text. And now let's try and run that page. Okay, so that will return out for us. Uh, to make things a little bit easier to see and work with, I'm gonna use shift alt two to uh, get a second tab or pane within Sublime Text. And then I'm, when I run this, I have BuildView as a plugin set up. You could install package uh, BuildView, control shift P to access that. And I will go ahead and mark this page as HTML. So it's a little bit easier to read for us. So let's try and trigger that bad page again. Let's say, um, our parameters can equal a dictionary with something or our h1 anything that we just tried earlier set to image. So this is funky because the parameter name itself is where we can get our cross-site scripting kind of injection in. Uh, but the value is what it's being used to trigger that WAF or that web application firewall to actually have this. The web application firewall has actually made it insecure in itself because it is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So the value of this HTTP variable, this get variable, uh, that's what's gonna trigger the page. But then using this parameter name itself, we can inject that into the page. So I'll we'll specify params equals parameters. Uh, we should just call that variable params so it's makes more sense, I guess. So let's spit that out. It says, okay, this page has been blocked by SecureWAF. SecureWAF detected the URL parameter code, H1 anything being properly rendered. So we could we know that because there aren't any like ampersand LT or LGT, some no HTML escaped uh, sequences are in there. That contains dangerous data. So this request has been blocked for your protection. Okay, so it looks like our XSS payload, let's make a variable for that. Our XSS payload could be, let's use a long string in Python. I wonder if that'll let us do something. So h1 anything, h1 anything. And what I actually wanna do is I wanna print out the URL of this page so I can interact with it more. So r.url or I can see in my browser how this actually loads. So I'll copy that in, slap it in, and okay, looks like that renders it just fine. This is currently trapped inside of a code block. So let me try and end that code block. And then it tries to have another one. So I'll, so it tries to close its original code block. So I guess I'll add a new one in there just so the page doesn't do weird things. Now let's try to do some of our image source equals nonsense. Um, I can use double quotes because we're inside of these triple quotes in Python. So if I have that and I do a little on error equals JavaScript alert one plus one. So we know that it evaluates that gets the forbidden. Okay, so it seems sensitive on this image tag. I didn't try just a straight script, so we could try that. Uh, script and end script, alert one plus two, it doesn't matter. Also gets a forbidden, okay. But our H1 went through. That's weird. What can we get through? Hmm. 
Let's let's go to payload all the things. Let's go check out some of their options and ideas for cross-site scripting or XSS injection. Looks like they have a few options. So typically a, a classic cross-site scripting technique would grab a cookie, a document.cookie from really the end user. Maybe we could get that to work eventually, but we can't seem to use these script tags. What else could we do? Can't use script, can't use script. Oh, the internal one, maybe it's replacing it. No, that's weird. So image also has it wine. Does SVG onload let it work? SVG onload. Can we try an SVG payload? Let's try one of those. Spit that in. Page is taking a little bit of time to come back. Oh, okay, there he goes. Code SVG onload alert XSS. What did it do to my quotes? How come my single quotes aren't in there? Does this actually happen on the web page? Oh, no, it does not. It does not run that alert, but it does a weird thing getting an SVG in there. Okay, if I use the one plus two, does that actually trigger it? That does, okay. So we have JavaScript, somehow, some way, but we can't seem to use quotes. The single quote didn't work. Will a double quote work? No. That is also being scraped out. Okay. What else are, what are our other options? What can we do to get a string? Uh, XSS or JavaScript string without quotes. I feel like that's just shot in the dark, but can you create a JavaScript string without single quotes or double quotes? Blah, blah, blah. I've had to create strings without quotes for project as well. We're delivering a executable thing. So they use string and they use forward slashes to get a string. Does that work? Or we could do it just from the numbers. Let's try, let's try both of those. Let's use string, this guy here. This contains no quotes. Let's try that. Copy that guy in. This contains no quotes. Oh, but it also removed our spaces. What the heck? So the string showed up, but we don't have spaces. That's gonna be annoying. Could we, we could use, we could get spaces in there if we were to use that from character code syntax. Let's try him. Paste that in as our little alert payload. Run that. Copy him. Put that on that page. That also doesn't work. Why not? Alert string. Oh, it removes the periods. Oh my gosh. How are we going to be able to do a document.location if we don't have periods or the dots that we can actually use? Dang. Okay. Well, we at least learned a little bit of something. We could use strings if we use these forward slashes. Does this cover anything else? Nope, that's all that's in that page. I wanna remove double quotes from string. That doesn't work. Oh, they use that here and payload all the things. Alert with backticks? Does that work? Can we use backticks as a string? Hmm. Well, maybe we could still, well, can we use those? How could we, how could we escape this whole syntax without using periods and spaces? Alert eval. Eval might let us do some stuff. Oh, 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 oh. And we could probably like base64 encode 
JavaScript. So I always forget this function. If you go into the console and you were to try and run like ATOB, what is, is ATOB and BTOA, those can get something into and out of base64. So please sub, okay. BTOA is to get it into base64 and ATOB is to decode from base64. Yeah, okay. So let's try to get our, let's try to get another actual payload. So let's say stager can actually equal this and let's get a real payload that can be another multi-line string and let's do alert hello this is me or whatever it doesn't matter as long as we have something with spaces and quotes uh we could eval the atob that's the one that we just that's the one that we just determined was right yeah, BTOA, yeah, so ATOB is what we need. And then if we use the forward slashes, will that work? Will forward slashes work? Let's go ahead and base64 encode, import base64, our payload, b64 encode that payload. And let's set the payload to equal that. So now it is base64 encoded. And let me, I think I'm in Python 2 again because of stupid sublime text. Let's just split that in with the percent sign. Does that work? Ooh. The page took it. Spit that in. No, unexpected token, that thing. Do I have too many? Oh no, because the, do I have too many parentheses? Unexpected token, closing parentheses. Could I use the back ticks that I saw as a technique? Ooh, that worked. Okay. Oh, so that, that would essentially give us like everything that we need because now we're not working out of the like original filter, so we, we could use spaces, we could use quotes, we could probably even use periods. So now we have unfiltered JavaScript and we could perform a real cross-site scripting attack. Okay, that is progress. So what do we need to do? Well, let's try and get someone's cookie. Let's do, let's, let's spin up a little server that could be accessible from the internet, so a public box. And let's just make a directory for XSS. Random name, doesn't matter. Python, tac m. Uh, specify Python 3, quad 8. So that guy should exist. He does, great, I see my request. Let's spin him one more time and let's try and modify our script to go to document.location, um, HTTP, johnhammond.org, quad eight as the port, and let's include a document.cookie. Does that work for us? Does he have a cookie? If I run this, I'll see myself go if I try and go to this location. Let me try that. I'll spin this up. I'll close out of this debugger here. Let's paste that in. Okay, so that carried me over. Error response, file not found, whatever. It doesn't need a file, but it got all of the cookies that I had. So my PHP session is in there. If I were to go submit that, okay, stop. I don't, I don't need that anymore. <laughs> Bring me back to the original server, please. Yeah, fine. Spin that one more time. And let's... I'm gonna make sure you guys can see that without my face being in the way. Go ahead and submit that URL to the validator, or whoever's gonna check that. Thanks, we'll check it out in a few minutes. Please give us some time before trying again. Okay, let's see if we ever get a request from him. We do, we do. We get a session. Oh, perfect. Okay, and that must be the cookie. So I'm gonna use my edit this cookie manager 
Let's search cookies for here. Can I add a new one? Can I add a new cookie, please? Whatever. Let's not do it in the browser. Let's just let's just use our Python. Our Python sword. The magic that we know within Python. So now let's let's just call this like catch cookie dot pi and let's totally save a different one to be like get flag dot pi. So we know that the session value looks like this because we just caught that with our JavaScript cross-site scripting cookie catcher. So what we could do is use requests, holy crap, to get this URL. Um, let's say my cookies equals session set to that with a key and value pair. Let's say cookies equals cookies and let's just load the page, print it out r.text, holy cow. And okay, it reads it just fine. So can I get to that article one page? That's the one that says it has a flag in it. So let's get URL plus article one and spit that guy out. Oh yeah, okay, awesome, awesome. When going head first in CTFs, everyone wants to come out with some cool flag. After a truckload of effort, we were rewarded with the text ACI. So there's our flag, that's it. That's what we did. That's how we solve it. That's fantastic. So that was kind of cool. I hope you guys really liked that challenge. Um, the little catch cookie, um, you needed to do some clever cross-site scripting stuff. If you had tinkered around with this for more, uh, I actually did, I spent a lot of time, I think I spent like a couple hours on this one. SVG, I didn't end up using originally. I actually did a body onload and I would use a new line to get my spaces in there. And I actually, I, I was even like changing the whole, URL uh, or the, the CSS in that page, I'd be like, I'd verify, what can I actually read in? Can I make the background red? How many characters can I use? And I would slowly figure out, okay, these are the filters that are that are beating me up and how I needed to get a, around them. So that eval base 64 technique is really what I use to get out of the filter and to be able to use strings, periods, up, like double quotes and single quotes, whatever I really needed to. And uh, I staged it all with Python and just grabbed the URL so I could kind of go back and forth between troubleshooting how it looks on the page and how it's going to actually render that JavaScript in my browser. So that's that. That was that challenge. But um, boy, I hope that was cool. I hope you guys learned a little bit of some tricks in there for cross-site scripting. Um, you could also do a little XML like HTTP request or XHR. That's even the the solution that I had. I'll go find and show you my script. I, I don't know why I'm still talking about this like I, I'm not going to show you. What is the name of this challenge? Why do I forget? Every single time. I've caught you now. That's what it is. Ape.py. Yeah, I actually used uh, XHR to go ahead and grab the article and then send it to myself. I would use document location after. But getting the cookie will work just as well because you're going to act as that user. So you can, you can see the style sheets that I was saying I did crazy stuff with. That's it. But um, some people might have had the, or ran into the issue where you're getting a cores error or a cross origin policy. Or like you have to be remaining on the website itself. You can't request out to an external site with XHR. That's correct. So when we were doing document.location, document.location will not have that cores problem, but if you were to use XHR or a new XML HTTP request to reach out to your external server where you're gonna grab the flag from, well, then it's gonna say, hey, you're not allowed to leave the site. Our cross origin policy is just not letting it have that. So don't use, do, use document.location. You gotta use document.location to go ahead and grab that cookie or grab the text that you really wanna end up seeing. So that's that. XML HTTP response is kinda cool, a request, because you can do a lot of drive-by downloading and access any other page that you want. But if you are catching something externally, you have to use document location or you're sending something externally, you'd have to use that in this case. At least that's what I've seen. I'm happy to hear if you guys got anything else. But that was that challenge. Wow. Wow.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something cool, some neat tricks with cross-site scripting, a lot of good resources out there between payload all the things and just some quick Googling and researching, just trying to do clever tricks and techniques. So if you like this video, please do hit that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice so I know how much you hated it. Uh, leave a comment, type some things in the box and hit end the enter key. YouTube algorithm stuff. Please don't hesitate to subscribe. Hit that bell icon. I don't know why you would ever hit a bell personally what did it do to you but hey i hate i hate doing i'm so bad at outros just get just get off the video see you on linkedin twitter facebook at discord patreon etc